today's lecture this uh, course is uh, about personal protective equipments and uh, uh, i consider this the most uh, uh, well known topic and i am sure everybody among you knows a lot about it, it already because uh, this is uh, you can say the trademark of safety because whenever in our countries at some site the people if they are wearing a helmet so it is posed that safety is in place it is not the matter but thing is that we know the safety uh, to be followed by helmets uh, and uh, earplugs and this stuff so we will be going through the uh, personal protective equipment course today it is your course 108 and uh, uh, first I, I would like to uh, play a video just to introduce you your favorite PPEs so that you can see them uh, and you can know the types and then we will go to slides and we will uh, quickly go through this course contents I will I would just like to share a, s a small video that will be showing the types of PP okay so I hope everybody can see uh, the screen yes please yes in this course we will be learning about personal protective equipment now uh, there are different kinds of personal protective equipment and we will see when we have to use it uh, whenever a person is having ending a risky situation and his health or safety related problem can occur uh, then uh, they have to use different types of personal protective equipments according to nature of activity and work situation so in this uh, during this video we will see different major types of personal protective equipment and how the workers have to use them there are different major types of personal protective equipment we will learn and uh, first of all we will learn about head protection the personal protective equipment for head protection is a hard helmet uh, it is used against the falling objects or the objects if there is a danger of uh, hitting something something uh, hanging or swinging uh, to avoid the pumps so uh, we use the head helmets to protect the head so while using the head uh, protection we use different helmets hard heads bump caps guards accessories extra also to uh, they help us to avoid the entanglement in the machinery for the hairs so uh, what are the activities in which we use them these are the construction or building repair activities working tunnel or excavations and different other activities like driving motorcycle as, uh, as well as a domestic safety protection Next come the hand protection PPEs uh, we need the hand protection while working uh, against the injuries or to the hands uh, due to cold, heat, burning, vibration, resistant friction, cuts from sharp objects or chemicals or microbiological risks and germs or bacteria or viruses. So for hand protection different kinds of gloves are used for hand protection. Uh, the examples of hand protection equipment are work gloves and gauntlets etc. And these uh, are uh, different kind of uh, gloves for different situations. Uh, there will be rubber gloves, there will be leather gloves and uh, different uh, kinds of gloves. Uh, now, different activities in which uh, we should be wearing the hand protection equipment are the construction activities. They can be the activities small with vibration apparatus, LTs or drilling and also a very hot or cold uh, environment 
they will require the hand protection then there are also chemicals and hazardous elements uh, which can cause uh, the hand burns or different kind of allergies there are manual handling of sharp objects also we require different our third type of pp is i am face protection uh, according to an estimate in the world around more than 600 workers suffer from eye injuries daily such as you can be avoided by wearing the eye and face protection equipment uh, some examples of eyes and face protections are safety glasses and goggles eye and face shields eyewear accessories over specs and visors etc also the general activities that will require eye and face protection equipment are using the gas or vapors in presence of pressure performing the welding operation handling any hazardous substances which can be the gas or liquids so these activities will require the eye and face protection equipment uh, next four type of pp is respiratory protection equipment it's a broad group of pp and to prevent the inhaling or absorption of the particles or gases examples are the breathing apparatus full face or half mask respirators power respirators or protective hold disposal face mask detectors or monitors extra respiratory pp is required proper identification training and usage and uh, some environment or situations in which the respiratory pipettes are can be when uh, workers in contact with large amount of leakage of gas vapors particles so and also in case of germs or viruses these are required fifth type of pp is the hearing protection equipment these pp's are required in an environment with high noise levels in a high noise environment workers must now work longer and without the appropriate hearing protection equipment like earplugs or earmuffs some examples of hearing protection equipments used uh, generally are the earplugs and defenders noise meters communication sets and acoustic phones etc our next sixth uh, personal protective equipment is the for for protection for protection equipments are designed to protect uh, your foot and legs from various hazards that can damage the feet in case of high temperature crushing slippery conditions cutting chemicals or electric hazards uh, for any work involving above situation we require wearing the foot protection equipments on the workplace by employees to protect their foot or legs or getting uh, the electrical uh, current some examples of foot protection equipment are safety boots and shoes anti-static and conductive footwear the next Personal protective equipment are the body protection equipments. Body protection equipment becomes critical when weather or visibility conditions are not good. As during a poor visibility, visibility checkers will help to protect in excavations or dark tunnels. High visibility checkers will help to reduce risk of being unnoticed. Also, full body suits are used against entanglement hazards, fire or extreme temperature environments, spillage of liquids, chemicals, biological or nuclear contamination hazards. Some examples of body protection equipment are life jackets, clothing for specific weather conditions, high visibility clothing, harnesses and others. Next, another PPE type is height and access protection equipment. 
usage of this PPE is required whenever working at a difficult access platform or high level above or below the ground. In general industry, fall protection is required by OSHA for any height change of 4 feet or 1.21 meter or more than that. One very much critical point with the height and access protection equipment is the proper training and usage because the if they are used in a wrong way they can do the harm to the workers. Some examples of height and access protection equipment are fall arrest system, body harness, lowering harness, rescue lifting, energy absorbers and others so these are the height and excess protection equipment now let us revise the a different type of ppes the here the first one was the head protection the second one was the hand protection third one is eye and face protection the fourth one is respiratory protection the fifth was hearing protection the sixth is foot protection seven was the body protection and eight was the height and excess protection so these are all the summarized eight types of different PPEs majorly used in the HAC and these will be covered in PPE codes of 108
here you see this triangle of hierarchy of control uh, first of all on the top there is elimination and then comes the substitution this elimination and substitution are uh, in the sequence then comes the injuring controls then are the administrative controls and then there is a PPE and then safe work practices on the bottom so here if you see we can just make the bullet points so what is the purpose of making a triangle for hierarchy of controls uh, if you see on the both side there is the effectiveness and other side we have the implementation costs so we see as we go we come uh, from top to bottom the implementation cost decreases while the effectiveness of the controls increases uh, uh, the effectiveness of control is decreases if we come from top to uh, bottom and implementation cost is uh, decreasing and this effectiveness increases for elimination and substitution the effectiveness is maximum and uh, for so safe work practices the effectiveness is minimum while the cost for elimination substitution engineering controls and this stuff is maximum while the implementation cost for PPEs and safe work practices is reducing so this is the hierarchy of controls and we will uh, go through these controls and then we will see that here is our PPEs this is the part of control mayor because whatever we are uh, uh, you need to remember one thing uh, no matter whatever we have studied we are studying we will keep studying in a health and safety uh, field uh, the uh, purpose and aim of studying the HAC things is to create a safer environment and a safer environment comes to the control of the hazards and risks so we will always be talking about that how to control the risks and hazards at workplaces or your domestic place everywhere so this hierarchy is very important and we will go through all these steps and then we will see our particular topic of personal protective equipment that how uh, they are used as a hierarchy of controls uh, in uh, how they are used as a control mayor or instrument of control to reduce the risk so first we see uh, that in this hierarchy First of all, you need to know these uh, two terms. You, you can uh, see the, one is the pre-contact control and second is the point of contact control. So pre-contact controls are those controls will which help us to remove the hazards before getting the workers in touch with the work. So removal of any given hazard before a worker comes into contact with it. So with this hazard including elimination substitution injuring control and administrative controls so these are sort of controls that can help us to remove a hazard or uh, can prevent uh, some some worker or people to get in touch with the hazard it is obvious very obvious that if we eliminate or substitute any hazard then definitely when a worker don't have to mess with it and uh, same is with the engineering control if we modify the system uh, we do some engineering controls then definitely hazards uh, workers don't need to get in touch with the hazard uh, and same is the true for administrative control if through some administrative measures we can avoid the uh, direct uh, 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 direct contact of hazard with the uh, worker then it is more safer and, and that is the reason these from elimination substitution engineering and administrative control these are pre contact controls and then comes the point of contact control these controls measures are taken when at the point of contact contact when the workers or people are uh, in contact with the hazard
so PPEs and safe work practices are among these point of contact control because PPE is actually uh, PPE is come into action when we cannot avoid the hazard and then we want to prevent or we want to reduce the risk or effect of the uh, effect of the hazard for the people so uh, these are called the point of contact control so here uh, one thing you can see this is the hierarchy of control and then uh, in this figure you can understand how the implementation cost increases or decreases and uh, which measures are more effective and which are lesser effective and along with that now we know that there are two types of controls one are pre-contact controls and second are point of contact control and if somebody is discussing with you you must know that there are two control measures which are point of contact controls which are PPEs and safe work practices while the elimination substitution engineering and administrative controls are the pre-contact controls so it was a uh, little bit about this hierarchy of controls then comes the elimination and substitution uh, previously as well uh, as uh, already one of our delegate was talking about hierarchy of control so uh, you well uh, you are well aware of that that elimination or substitution are the most uh, effective control measures in uh, over here we either eliminate or substitute any uh, hazard with the uh, alternative or safer uh, activities or uh, process so these are most effective uh, it, these are the highest level of protection it, it is involved elimination of hazard or substitution of uh, the uh, has a hazard, hazard in the sense that we substitute the material of substance, substance with the safer ones or we substitute uh, the process uh, with the safer one process so this is elimination and substitution then comes the engineering controls here you can see also and you already have uh, will be aware of that uh, during the previous courses that engineering controls involve uh, doing some engineering uh, like here you see in this machine uh, to avoid this thing the safety glasses are used or here local exhaust is used to avoid the, the smoke and everything and uh, then same is with this paint uh, so uh, uh, normally during you know, we isolate uh, the process or we can do the ventilation like here or we modify equipment to avoid the hazards. So this has been original controls, all this, same thing, eliminate toxic material or this, this uh, uh, is the same thing. So now, uh, just a uh, quick knowledge check, hazard control must be addressed in which order of priority? Uh, actually, this, this kind of uh, slide I just put because uh, just keeping the psychology of the learners or delegates or students in mind that whenever we are going through some things, they try to remember the previous things. So no need to be that much confused because you know that what you need to pick up. For example, now we have asked you what is the hierarchy of control uh, sequence. So if you have see this triangle with care, then you can easily determine that what is the sequence there is substitution then engineering administrative and pps so you will easily know in any exam in any discussion that this is what is the hierarchy of control and in which manner we apply that so this is a just quick shot to know that you are looking at the things carefully so, and you also get an idea that if somebody is showing you a slide like this then what you need to know you, what you need to pick up from that so uh, next administrative control and work practice controls uh, so now administrative control are required work can apply to do something like engineering this in this uh, controls workers or employer need to do something uh, it can be written proper operating procedure for example uh, it is also uh, uh, a way of removing the hazard uh, 
that if some activity or some process involve the hazards, then they, uh, if some uh, proper operating procedure is devised, it will also help out to eliminate or reduce the risk. So this kind of uh, all these kinds of inspection and maintenance, housekeeping and all these training, supervision, regulatory areas or this, all these things are a uh, kind of administrative controls. Then comes the personal protective equipment. The, the, this is the control mayor which, uh, on which our course of this personal protective equipment is based. So now in the hierarchy, next comes the personal protective equipment. And you can clearly see that elimination and uh, substitution was the most effective. And then what the engineering and administrative control. So PPEs and safer practices are the at the bottom and they are the least effective ones. So anything designed to be worn or held by someone at work to protect against one or more workplace hazards. So some anything to be worn like uh, uh, body harness or uh, shoes or something and held by someone as face shield extra. So anything actually that help to protect against one or more workplace hazards or, and also uh, help to reduce the effect or impact of hazard is called personal protective equipment. It's least effective at minimizing risk because it doesn't control the hazard at the source and it relies on human behavior and supervision. This, this is very important. This least effective you can see from the hierarchy of controls. And it doesn't control the hazard at the source, definitely because it is a, a post control, post point of contact measure and relies on human behavior and supervision. Yeah, it, it is very much uh, dependent on how the people are using a helmet or face shield or something. So these are the least, least effective at minimizing the risk because uh, the human behavior and supervision is also a factor to supplement higher level control measures as a backup. So here it is very important that you can not only use personal protective equipment as a mean of controlling the hazards or risks. It is always used as a supplement along with the, as a combination with other control measures. It is a short term interim measure until a more effective way of controlling the risk can be used. It is a temporary in some cases, it is a temporary and you need to devise a permanent engineering or administrative control measure or elimination or substitution when there are no other practical control measures available as a last resort. So these are the least effective and in case if there are no other measures available, then they will be used, but they will never be considered as the uh, only uh, mean to control the hazards. So. PP control requires worker to wear something, example, as I told, wear shoes or wear eye goggles or earbuds or this uh, full body uh, apparels, so and gloves, etc. And secondly, load, uh, uh, yeah, here. Uh, second thing we uh, uh, were discussing that uh, along with wearing. To help so face shield and this stuff is uh, for for holding to protect the face extra. So now this is something about the PPE controls. So now come why we require the PPEs. First in first place definitely to reduce the risk of hazard. But second thing is law also require it and the costs which otherwise will have to be. Uh, beard, human, social or economic of non-compliance can be catastrophic because if uh, we are not applying the uh, proper uh, PPEs, then any accident can happen and that cost is far more than that of the personal protective equipment cost. So these are also, also uh, required by law and also to reduce the other costs. It is moral, ethical, and legal obligation for a safe working environment. So moral, morally and ethically, it is also a duty, but it is also legal binding. So regarding the legal uh, uh, nature of this, employers must protect employees from workplace hazards according to OSHA Safety Act 1970. So 
you need to remember that the compulsion of PPE or legal binding of PPE is due to this act, OSHA Safety Act 1970. This you can remember and by, uh, definitely during our journey and practices of uh, as a health and safety professional, we can refer to these standards and we have to refer to these standards. So the personal environment regulation 2002 is also there. And then there is personal equipment at work regulation and as amended. So these are the legal uh, uh, legal requirements uh, which require the employers to provide the PPEs to the employees. So identifying the PPEs, anything designed to be worn or held by someone at work or protect against one or more workplace hazards, it is the PPE. So uh, identifying means knowing that which kind of uh, protection requires which kind of PPEs. So as we also saw in the video, there were hand protection, foot protection, head protection, and eye and face protection, ear protection, and respiratory protection, safety harnesses, and life jackets, high visibility jackets, and aprons and overall body protection. So these all are the types of <coughs> And PPEs, identifying the PPEs means you should know that what kind of protection requires what kind of protection equipment as we also uh, saw in the video. So uh, <clears throat> this was the introduction about the PPEs and its requirements. So now how to devise a personal protective equipment plan because as a uh, health and safety officer once you are at the site once you are at your job and definitely to initiate any activity your duty is to devise the proper personal protective equipments to the workers working at the site or workplace so you have to devise a uh, personal protective equipment plan and this plan will involve the following steps first of all hazard assessment the second one will be identifying need of PPE based upon the hazards assessed. You need to identify that what kind of hazards are involved and what kind of PPEs will be required. Then once you have identified the PPEs and you have uh, uh, you have assigned the PPEs, then you need to give training for the PPEs to the employees. That is very critical because providing them with PPE is not sufficient until they are not uh, well aware of the usage of the PPEs. Then maintenance of PPEs, because once you provide the PPEs, later on you have to keep a check that the PPEs are properly maintained so that every time they are used, they are in full function condition. Then comes the monitoring PPE program. So overall, this program should be periodically audited and reviewed so that if there is any uh, problem with the PPEs or if there is a change in the uh, uh, activities or if there is a change in requirement of training or these things, these need to be monitored and evaluated uh, for the effectiveness of the PPE program. So for a PPE program, you need to go through the following uh, steps. Just to remember, you can remember it as I have highlighted HIT MM. This is acronym. You can remember it. Hazard assessment, I for identifying need of PPEs, and then T for training of our PPEs, and M maintenance, and M monitoring. So these steps are the part of a personal protective equipment. So if your employer asks you to devise a personal protective equipment or you are asked to do a personal protective equipment plan in return, then you will start from hazard assessment at the workplace and then you will outline the uh, required protections. For example, if it is a work at height, now you need the 
the protection against work at height so a body harness or these things you will require if there is a welding involved then you will need the you will have to ad identify that and the need for safety uh this uh, safety goggles and if it is on easy atmosphere then accordingly you will mention that the ear plugs are or earmuffs or whatever are suitable are required so this will be the second step and then after that once you have brought in these ppes depending upon this nature of hazard uh, then you need to train your employees or workers uh, to or for the usage of these person protect equipment and then maintenance of ppes and then you need to monitor this all program over and over during the course of the job so this was the first uh, protective event plan heat mm so uh, next come the um, this uh, same related to previous that when it is required whenever there is any condition which is capable of causing injury or impair impairment by absorption and physical contact means hazard come can come into any form so with different processes there are different hazards actually this thing is because first of all you have to assess the hazard so you should know that in what kind of situation what kind of hazards can be there and what kind of processes are on from the workplace uh, what kind of hazards they can uh, pose so from processes there is over pressure fires explosion noise loss of contamination and environmental hazards can be there there are physical chemical biological and cultural and social chemical hazards and then come the radiological hazards mechanical hazards rotating machinery is contact or any are these things can pose a hazard and for this hazard you need to identify the for for example for cutting when you see that there is a mechanical process involved then there can be the hazard of mechanical hazard of cutting so you need to advise the gloves you need to advise the shields or body shields or leather shields or uh, also then you will see that because the people are doing the cutting so they need a uh, different kind of uh, foot protection so depending upon this kind of uh, mechanical hazards you will advise the appropriate pps and uh, then there is electrical hazard so all these things are just to uh, tell you that uh, hazards can be related to the process environment environment the chemical hazards radiological and with the mechanical and electrical so you need to know the hazard this is part of the hazard assessment uh, and uh, for hazard assessment when you have to do a pp plan you can have some uh, something like this some for performer here you will fill this performer uh, and here we have sample foot hazards are can be like this depending upon the situation then you will check if there are eye or face hazards related to anything if there are flying particle there are molten matter anything respiratory hazards and then head hazards then electrical hazards hand hazards and similarly here noise blood and this so that whatever kind of hazard you will find you will have to provide the protection for that so for foot hazards you need to provide the foot protection and definitely as we saw in the video as well and we study when you will identify a hazard related to foot you will <coughs> go for foot protection and then you will know that what are the foot protection uh, <coughs> equipment so you will devise it accordingly so this sort of table uh, perform, uh, performer you can fill in that will help you to devise better ppes for the for your pp plan uh, so <coughs> now the again the video thing that we have full body ppes for eyes for head protection and uh, for foot protection so this is same thing then comes the how to use ppes pp will almost always part of your risk control measure for reducing the exposure of your worker to hazards so 
as we mentioned they will be always a part of your risk control measures they will not on be only risk control measure pp must only be used in conjunction with clear operating procedures and safe per work methods this thing is very much important it emphasizes on the training part the third one the hazard assessment and then identifying the proper uh, ppe and now it come it will be going to the training thing and training means definitely how to use ppes when pp is used at your work site you must ensure that staff receive a comprehensive induction to using the pps have advocate on the job supervision or counsel discipline know how to put on pp so all these points don't use damage or heavily worn pp so all these points related to the proper training so that they will know that how to use the ppes so uh this is third point so it comes the general selection criteria again based upon the hazard to worker and exposure risk level definitely we will identify the hazard and depending about the hazard we will select the pps all type pp must be properly fitted and periodically fitted as applicable then pp must be considered properly worn when required pp must be regularly so all these criteria need to be followed during the your pp plan so uh, now the same thing again just we will uh, go through this head protection <clears throat> we know for head protection we use this but what i want to show you it it is again uh, used against falling objects bump head accidental head contact is electrical hazards but you know the most important brain and this is the uh, our brain eyes everything is here so this is very important to wear the and uh, second thing just from this picture you see though i am there i don't need to work but whoever enters the site because you see up there the people are working so though i don't have to do anything but even if i am just there standing beneath them even then i am at a risk some anything can fall so everybody should wear a, a proper pp while they are on the side so uh uh yes this thing there are different types of hard helmets these are types uh, means uh, you have seen different colors there is white color red and blue different color helmets have different meanings as a safety professional you should know the very uh uh the very categories of these equipment white is for engineer supervisor managers and foreman and uh, when you see a red helmet you must know that it is a for five fighters and then for the blue uh, these are electricians carpenter and other technical operators and yellows are for laborers and browns are for welders and workers with high heat applications green for safety officers and gray for site visitors so actually there is a purpose behind this uh, as a very professional person you should first of all know that what color is for what purpose what kind of people will wear that and secondly there is a logic behind that if you see a person wearing a gray helmet on the site then definitely as a safety professional what is your purpose your purpose of being at a site is to be very much conscious about the safety so when you see a guy with the gray helmet then you must know that this is someone who is a visitor at the site so definitely visitor can't be that much aware of the site situation conditions and they will not be aware of the hazards or risks uh so you need to be more careful and you can protect them better way and at the similarly if somebody is wearing the yellow helmet and you see him in a grid area or in a uh, some very uh, uh, with the area with the uh, you can say in a noisy area uh, near uh, turbines or anything then you will know that he is not a technical guy he is just a laborer so it can be dangerous he can uh, be uh, he will not be informed much about this uh, 
uh, environment so you will know that he is not capable of operating a, a transformer or a, a switch gear so for, from this color of helmet you should know that he is not the technician yeah, at the same time if he is wearing the blue helmet you will know that he is the electrician so if he is working there he is at the right place so these are the purposes of these helmets to be worn on the site so that safety people uh, can uh, estimate the capability of the people who are at the place so these colors they you should know them and you should know that which people will be wearing which color so next come classes of the hazards so uh, uh, these hard helmets so definitely uh, as a safety person you should know that there are different types of helmet hard uh, these hard helmets type one type two in this video and in the introduction we just saw there is uh, the hard helmet to protect against bombs and falling objects but then there are different types type one has a purpose object fall directly on top of the helmet but not from objects that strike the side front or back of the head so if the objects are not there is no danger of coming the object from the sides or front or back then the type 1 helmet is sufficient from the uh, to protect from the objects falling directly from the top so you will advise the type 1 helmet and then uh, the helmet uh, manufacturing and uh, uh, quality uh, or you can say the material specification will be gone by NC Z89.1 1997 this is a standard so uh, you need to know that for this type 1 helmet will be okay and it should comply with the this NC standard and secondly if the uh, things are also coming from the side front and back of the head then type 2 helmet will be worn and it will be worn by this uh, standard so similarly there is class C conductive as the name uh, suggests that this is uh, designed for comfort of a limited protection it is conductive so if there is electric current or then it can conduct so it cannot be used uh, for against the electrical hazard for electrical hazards we need to use class e electrical helmets or class g general electrical helmets because this class e provide protection against electrical utilities uh, for example people working in switch gear or uh, near the high voltage lines so for class e proof tested voltage level is 20 uh, k well, kilo uh, kilo volts and for class g the protection uh, level is uh, 2200 volts so depending upon the amount of voltage near the uh, uh, near the electrical sides you know, we need to use the or device the uh, uh, hard helmet according to these standards and similarly for eye and face protection there are common cause of eye injuries there are different kind of eye and face protection devices and you need to know that they should comply with these standards and definitely again the same thing is safety goggle safety glasses safety goggles and face shields they will be serving different purpose and you should know that the appropriate one uh, for example for uh, definitely welding job you cannot devise only the safety glasses you need to devise the welding face shield and the workers must be having this so <laughs> this uh, you need to know the difference between the respiratory per and then comes the respiratory per protection here also there are different kind of definitely you should know where the uh, only this uh, surgical mask will work and where the respirator is needed and you also should know uh, that uh, if there is n95 mask so it should be fit tested according to this this uh, uh, this this uh, uh, act 
or what you can standard uh, and uh, nowadays as we see there the people were talking about uh, the face masks and uh, this n95 masks so actually this is uh, the, uh, the the definitely as we already talked that uh, all the face masks are not for uh, all the jobs so you need to know what kind of situation require what kind of pp and the pp should meet what kind of standard so and then comes the hand protection similarly for different kind of hand uh, uh, jobs there can be different hazards from the uh, job for the hands so there are different kind of uh, gloves that you need to recommend for example there are anti vibration or chemical resistant or leather palm depending upon different different jobs as we also say in the video and then come the foot and leg protection it is the same for different sort of jobs you should know uh, because the long boots are not necessary for all the work environments while in some cases the short uh, safety boots will also not do the job so all these things are very much important while you are uh, devising the foot and leg protection devices so then comes the standard uh, yeah same set of standard compliance with the foot protection you should have the knowledge you should know you don't need to remember very much but you should know that there are some standards that need to be complied for the devices and these things and these are the different standards to which these foot protection or footwear devices should uh, comply with so here is a little knowledge check common causes of foot injuries include crushing penetration molten metal chemical slippery surface and show up objectives if you have you have the concept that why we use the foot protection then definitely it is very easy to answer that this is the true statement uh, yes one more thing I am just uh, keeping it a little bit quick because I know these details you are already aware of and we saw. So uh, again, means this is for your reference. Foot and leg protection, there are coveralls, the body coats, vest, jackets, aprons, and surgical. These are also for leg protection or, for example, you can see the pictures here. The people working, they will require, they can also require this sort of protection so as a safety professional you should be in a better position to understand the situation and devise the appropriate ppes so uh, then again up to here as we see there should be general always use all ppes according to the manufacturer's instructions uh, yes now there is general usage and handling instructions for ppes always use all PPE is according to the manufacturer's instructions in order to ensure the effectiveness of PPE against concern risk. Make sure that all times of items of PPE used together are compatible with each other. So these are the general usage and handling instruction for you. You need to consider them while you are devising the uh, PPEs and you are handling the PPEs. All the PPEs that are prone to be contaminated must be handled with care and properly con decontaminated before and after use. And disposable must not be reused. All the yeah, once a PPE is marked unfit or it is disposed of, like uh, the uh, this face mask or uh, the filter for respirator, once it is marked as or disposed or marked as uh, the uh, uh, marked as the uh, uh, expired then you should not re uh, allow it to be reused and then all the PP must be stored in appropriate conditions to <coughs> avoid any contamination definitely if you keep, uh, keep this uh, uh, face mask or these things in a dusty place they will get contaminated and same is the case with the other uh, PPE, so you need to take care of this point. Any damaged, unfit, expired PPE, the same thing. Definitely, there is no uh, use of unfit or expired PPE to be used because they will not be effective. So these general user handles for PPEs. 
now this is very important one that according to personal protective equipment regulation 2002 ppe on the market must be supplied in official language of destination country with following relevant information <coughs> you need to know as a safety professional when you order or your management is ordering the ppes then you should know that this ppe regulation act 2002 require you that the PPE must come with the following information mentioned <coughs> as a <coughs> on on the packing packaging or uh, as a brochure in the official language of destination country. For example, if you are in the Middle East, it should be in the Arabic, or uh, if you are in the Africa, it should be English or uh, French, whatever is the uh, uh, official language. So. What are the information that should be mentioned on the data? It is information on storage, use, cleaning, maintenance, servicing, and dis disinfecting. Infecting that how to store it, how to use and clean and maintain the equipment, or how to disinfect it. Also, the information related to the level of protection provided by the PPE. Definitely, if there is a class one helmet, it should be mentioned because it will be the helmet. It should be mentioned on the helmet uh, data, uh, whatever the brochure accompanying the helmet, that it is a level one, uh, it is a class one helmet and it will not provide the protection against the electrical hazard. So uh, this level of protection provided by PPE must be mentioned and also information on the suitable ppe accessories and appropriate spare parts for example if there are uh, the respirator or uh, there are respirators then it should be mentioned that what kind of and what kind of accessories for example the filter will be used with this uh, ppe it should be mentioned in the information Information and information limitation to usage of PP. Definitely, the PP. If there is a limitation of any PP, it should be mentioned. Uh, the same thing like level of protection because it should be mentioned that this helmet will not provide protection against the 20 uh, kilovolt uh, electricity. Information on expiration period for the PP safe usable life. So it should also be mentioned like other commodities so these are the information that a manufacturer should supply you with the ppe and you should find these uh, with the ppes once you order the ppes and these uh, are required you by the ppe regulation act 2002 so the suppliers need to abide by this and should provide these they are legally bound to provide these information when they are selling you any ppes so what happens in case of non-compliance of PPE is low rate of compliance in wearing PPE will indicate the failure of safety management system. Definitely, if safety system is failing, it means the uh, people will not wear the PPEs or vice versa. If the people are not for abiding by the PPE plan, then definitely your uh, safety management system is not properly in place. Reason for non-compliance from employers Sometimes this non-compliance can come from the employer. In case if employer is not providing quality PPEs, yeah, it is also quality PPEs. Yeah, he is providing the PPE, but they are not quality PPE. So the employees sometimes are not willing to wear such kind of uh, PPEs. For example, uh, the helmets or goggles, etc. If they are not quality. PPE, they will not be comfortable, so people will not be ready to wear it. Employer doesn't properly supervise the use of PPE. Definitely, if you provide um, it, this concerns, if you are not, uh, you are providing the PPEs but not providing the training, then it will also cause the non-compliance. Employer fails to enforce the use of PPE. Sometimes you train the people, you provide them with quality PPE, but you did not force, you did not keep a check so the people are now wearing the PPEs and it causes the non-compliance. Then comes the employee does not properly train employees the same point like supervision and train. Training is very important if you provide them and you they don't know that how to use that, they will not properly 
use them and it will cause the non-compliance so all these points it is non-compliance and actually what it is telling you as a safety professional that you should avoid this you should make your employer to provide quality ppe to to train you should train your people to properly uh, for the proper use of ppes and you should supervise the usage of ppe and also you should enforce the use of ppe to make your ppe plan and your safety management system a success <clears throat> now as the training is very important so there are some requirement for training each employee who is required to use ppe must be trained to know so it is responsibility of employer and definitely on behalf of employer it is your responsibility as a safety professional that you train uh, uh, the employees to use ppes and when pp is necessary <clears throat> yeah during the tra uh, training requirement first of all the requirement of training is that you should educate your employees that when they need to wear the pp and what kind of pp is necessary for the job and also you need to tell them how to properly put on take off or adjust and wear the pp the limitation of the pp should also be educated or communicated to your employees then proper care maintenance useful life and disposal of pp should be educated so do, these are the requirement of training that during a training you should train your workers on these things you should not only tell them that this is the pp you use it for this purpose and how to use it but you also need to tell him that what is the uh, useful life of this pp so that he the same uh, filter for respirator they are not using for two three four years so all this information you also need to educate or communicate to your employees then uh, regarding the ppes there are some responsibility from the employer and employer is required to perform the hazard assessment definitely this is part of ppe plan so because employer need to plan the ppe plan so perform hazard assessment provide appropriate pp train employees maintain and replace pps and review so actually employees responsibility of an employer is to place a, a pp plan and as we know the pp plan will involve these hazard assessment appropriate pp identification and training of employees then maintaining the place pps and you have to evaluate pp program that is the monitoring so this is hit mm that is the responsibility of the employer uh, yes here is a case study workers was cleaning a semi trailer tanker he was standing on top of the vehicle wearing a respirator and hosing down the tanker he took off his pp and inhaled hydrogen <coughs> sulfide causing him to fall his death was a combination of chemical burn to the lungs and the effect of falling this terrible accident resulted from a worker not using their personal equipment correctly you see how much important it is to uh, let your employees know and to train them that how not only how to use the ppe but to use it correctly or properly it is also possible that workers have not received on the job training for work procedure and using ppe so work job on the job training is also very important just uh, verbally communicating or off the site training is not sufficient because when he, he he was supposed to uh, he had been trained he was in a classroom sort of environment but he, he was not uh, trained on the site and he was means uh, standing on a uh, tanker or and uh, then using the ppes was not part of the training so he missed this thing it also shows that pp is always considered a last resort when managing a chemical risk definitely it is very obvious that it was it, it, it this this is the least effective control measures so from this case study 
uh, the only thing you need to take with you is the most important thing not the only thing that the training is very important and on-site training is the real training so empl uh, employer responsibilities uh, uh, it, for the, uh, from the employer responsibility if there is a problem then definitely employers are fined or they have to make payments but uh, in which cases when they fail to do the following performing hazard assessment providing the ppes and training and all this stuff if they fail to provide the employee with that things then they have to pay fine but when they are exempted from making the payments when uh, or when they don't need to pay for the pp is that non-specialty safety to protect the footwear and non specialty prescription safety IVRs, everyday clothing means these things are not in scope of the employer they are these are not legal binding and they don't uh, fall into the category of uh, the, uh, the basic PPEs uh, ordinary clothing skin creams or other items used solely for protection from weather consumer safety items worn by food workers lifting belts when employees lost or intentionally damage the PPEs in these cases employers don't need to pay for anything and also employer don't need to pay for these things yeah employer need to pay for the safety goggles but they don't need to pay for your safe uh, uh, other eyewears or your glasses uh, or everyday clothing maybe they need to pay for your uh, apparels and uh, full body harness or this stuff but not for the everyday clothing so just uh, just to mention as a safety professional you should know that this kind of stuff is not included in the scope of employer responsibilities. Uh, so when there are the employer responsibilities here, also are the employees' responsibilities. So what are the employees' responsibility? He should properly wear the PPEs and he should be attending the PPE training, care for clean and maintain PPEs. He should maintain his PPEs uh, in proper way and in case of any problem he should inform his superiors for its placement or it should not be like this that if he is sent to the job and something happens then he is reporting no the, it is the responsibility of employee that when he is provided the, the pre -p and training he should wear it he should keep it safe and he should keep it maintained and in case of any problem with the pp he should inform his supervisor so these are the responsibilities of imply so actually why to need this employees and employee responsibility because in case of any conflict you should know what will be, will be the procedure if any employee was failed to report any problem with the uh, PPE under his control or under his possession and something happens then definitely he will have to be responsible for that and if he was provided with the PPE and he was not wearing the uh, PPE then definitely the responsibility will not be with the employer so you need to know this stuff so there is a knowledge check who is just a point of providing PPE needed to comply with OSHA standards definitely the employer very simple if we know the concepts we know the story then we know the answers as well and which of the following is your approved protection sunglasses prescription glasses reading glasses glasses meeting nc standard z87 definitely the glasses meeting nc standard z87 will be a approved eye protection not the sunglasses or this so which of the following is not considered pp rubber gloves glass meeting and standard sports shoes hitting muffs sports shoes are definitely not the ppes so now there is a fact summary use of pp goes back 100 of years for dust extra as a safety professional just to share with you pp is a point of contact control pp is the last line of defense are the first when it comes to protecting workers she has general pp standard is 29 cfr 9 this one is the general standard for pp employer uh, this require us for uh, this is required systematic assessment of the workplace hazard 
the first step and subsequently to select PPE to effectively protect workers. These to do the risk assessment of the hazards and then devising the effective PPEs uh, through this 29 CFR 1910.132 standard. Employer must provide PP to employees. Employees must wear and handle PP with care. Training on PP is imperative and required. It is very important. When you are in, uh, a person in charge, make sure whatever you provide them, you train them to use that. Because if they don't know how to use the PP properly, instead of gaining the benefit of that, it will be adding up to the danger for the employees so be careful when you are in charge you need to make sure that not only your guys have the ppes proper ppes but you should make sure they know how to use the ppes whatever even if it is the helmet you should take care that they know how to properly use it. PPE will also be a part of your risk control measure for reducing the exposure of your own workers to hazards. Approximately all the times they will be used, but they are not. They will be used with other control measures. Must only be used in conjunction with other clear operating procedures and safe work methods. Comprehensive induction and adequate on-job training. On-job training, as we also saw, the case study is very much important and regular training in the form of safety workshop toolbox talks and emergency drills because you need to keep reminding the people you that how to use the pps and how much it is important so safety workshops toolbox talks and emergency drills should be regularly organized awareness and use of pp handling storage and maintenance Awareness for emergency situation like we mean failure or chemical reaction. Don't use damage or heavily worn PPs. These are all the facts which we have already studied. So I hope though it was very quick, maybe, but uh, also actually uh, as the time goes on, people lose interest and definitely students they don't like to have the lecture. So here our session for PPE is, is ended. Uh, then there is only just uh, supplementary material for your information. I will not uh, waste your time on that, but it will be included in this. Uh, it is included in the slides. It will not be in the exam, but in current situation as a safety professional and regarding the PPEs, uh, you just you know the information. Here you can see control measure implementation covered. This thing you know, this hierarchy of controls, but this thing is new. It is a combination exposure risk pyramid for COVID-19 because the uh, classification of is for, for the, uh, of the hazard for the COVID-19 is based on uh, is categorized from very high to high to medium to low. So there is exposure level, and then there is risk of population, risk population with the COVID-19. So depending, actually depending upon this uh, pyramid, uh, uh, the PPEs for the COVID-19 are uh, advised. So this uh, slides, if it will be with you, you can have the detailed study of this, but I will let you know that uh, there are control for lower exposure risk workplace definitely the we have defined which are the lower exposure areas then for lower exposure risk workplaces there will be engineering control administrative control here we have defined what are the lower exposure risk jobs are those which do not require contact with people so this is the definition of this lower exposure risk workplace and these are the engineering and administrative and then personal protective equipment control measures for lower exposure risk level. Then comes the medium exposure risk level in the pyramid. And here are the engineering and administrative and PPE control measure for medium exposure risk. Then comes the high and very high exposure risk level uh, workplaces. And 
they are defined here and here are the engineering and administrative controls you can take help from to uh, tackle the COVID-19 situation and uh, here are the personal prote protective, protective equipments for high and very high exposure risk levels here you can see because this was a very hot topic that what kind of gloves and face mask or this so whatever is the means different uh, people and even different countries different uh, medical people they have different opinion but these are the things uh, which uh, comes from uh, the uh, health international health organization so here you can see for the person protect equipment for high and very high exposure risk there are different gloves gowns face shields n95 filters return battery protection program or the laboratories or so all these stuff you can read and you can have an idea because you must know that means different kind of ppes are used against covid 19 protection so on which basis we decide about them that which kind of person protective equipment will use so this is the mid exposure risk levels uh, low medium and high and very high and there are their engineering and administrative and then their personal protective equipment controls so commonly used pp for cover 19 are gloves face shield head helmets and all these so there is a uh, specification for some COVID-19 PPEs. Uh, these specifications are taken from with the reference and the references are provided over here from the CDC and OSHA.gov and CDC.gov. So you can use these references to check further about them. But uh, these were the basic uh, standards which these PPEs should comply uh, as mentioned on these resource websites so this was just a supplementary part to just let you have an overview that why and how the ppes are selected for covid 19 uh, definitely there will be different opinion as well but that is the reason here while providing the ppes types and then there's specification or appropriate recommended standards i have also provided the reference links so that was all for today this is also general user handling instruction for pps again they should be used carefully these are the same things again you see this personal equipment regulation 2002 it required the information should be mentioned with the ppes and all this information as we talked earlier that how to store information on storage use cleaning and level of protection and uh, their uh, useful life and all these again repeating here so all these <clears throat> it was uh, not all about ppes definitely there are a lot of things and there will be a lot of question in your mind so it was for today and don't be safety blinded be a safety minded this is very much important as only successful to be a successful safety professional you should be a safety minded person at home at work at play means you, whether you are at job or you are playing or you are having fun you have a safety mindset then only you can shop and you are you can uh, improve your hsc skills so if safety is a joke then that is a punchline so with this thank you very much for and the first question i i really want yes, to stress yes. here is, yes. how can i differentiate yes. between the helmet used for telecom company and for construction company how can i differentiate the the, the differences between these two helmets thank you well done yes uh, mr board very well done uh, safety, uh, I again will tell, being HSC is not remembering the lessons, not uh, remembering these lectures or uh, reading the books and applying only. It is about the common sense first, 
personality your personality you should ma- make your mindset you should know that how to protect from something actually there is no hard helmets the same hard helmet you will use in a construction site and if you are working in switch gear environment you uh, switch gear means you you know the electrical panels for high voltages and this so same you can use there but thing is that it is your assessment that the construction site if there is high voltage or voltage then definitely this hard helmet this helmet should be of appropriate category it should be category e or g or depending upon again it depends upon risk assessment and uh, first of all uh, as miss else she used to say no, that a great safety professional should be a great negotiator he should be excellent at convincing people because you have to mold the minds of the people the workers those people who don't know what can happen who are not aware of the risks and hazards and you have to tell them something dangerous coming so it is not very easy to tell someone to invest in something by telling that if you are not doing this this loss can happen so only a good negotiator or a person who is who has a good ability to convince people will be able to do that and definitely to sort of winning an argument or convincing on an opinion involves the very much common sense to understand the situation so as a safety professional let's leave this uh, book thing uh, aside and let's concentrate that how there is a guy from china he came as a boss so if you are going to tell him like somebody is coming from usa an engineer if i am going to tell him something even right i am 100% sure he will be reluctant to listen to me and following me is something that will be very much difficult for him even if i am right so sometimes it happens definitely there are good people they 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 respect your opinion they accept the right and wrong but for safety when we call it we we talk about assessment uh, when we talk about having an opinion definitely it might be possible that two people at the same time can have the logic which tells them that they are right so first thing and very much important thing for a safety professional is to avoid conflicts it is very much important for your job to avoid conflicts and never ever let other people feel that you are directing them to do something your attitude and behavior your way of talk your way of expressing your opinion should be like you are discussing with them show them that you are open to listen you are open to accept but they should listen your logic as well so in this case if chinese is talking about this then as a safety professional you need to uh give him your analysis you need to give him your logic in a polite way and you should tell him that definitely you know better but my assessment is this there is electricity or there is this so there is no uh, means communication or construction site or uh this electrical power or whatever mechanical helmets there are hard helmets definitely if there are uh, the objects or there are uh, uh some chances of bumps with the hard things then there will be the hard helmet and 
along with that definitely at the same place there can be the hard helmet but you if you see there there is electric wires or something definitely you can you can advise that no this helmet is not sufficient based upon the requirement because there is electrical power so we will need the class e or class g helmet or uh, if there is a class one helmet uh, get uh, this category one or class one helmet then you can say because there is also a danger on the height that there are uh, stuff from that can hit from the back on the head or from the front on the mouth definitely then category two or class two helmet is required so this way you need to give the logic and there is no construction helmet or communication site helmet specifically because this is all the choice depend upon the situation maybe a communication tower nearby where your generator your guy has to work on the generator so if he's working on the generator definitely there is a hazard of electricity so accordingly you will choose the helmet or otherwise if your guy just have to stand near you have to stand down uh, you are the engineer your helmet can be uh, can can be uh, means uh, the simple one the hard helmet only because the people are working above and you have to stand only there so uh, because you will not go near go near the electrical wire so you don't need the uh, this uh, uh, class e or g helmet so uh, i know this is getting bored and this was the long explanation but uh, i actually want to convey you that safety the, the most critical thing for a safety professional is to negotiate, to convince others, and to avoid conflicts. In this situation, definitely your question is good. You have your concerns. But as a safety professional, if I was there, I will never let this be a hot point between me and him. I will ex try to show him my full cooperation and then only I will give it as an opinion. And yes, second thing we used to discuss, and this is always there, that when you have the right and accurate assessment and your boss or your management or whatever is not going with your decision, then what you need to do? you need to make things official you need to convey the guys the situation that what can come to them and then you need to convey your uh, plan to the management through email or you know in a official way so that if something uh, uh, happens unfortunate happens then you will be safe and also when you tell the people clearly definitely especially workers that uh, you have conveyed this and this can happen to you then definitely they will be much careful and also at the same time you will you can sleep well in the night because you done your duty and in the day the court guys they cannot uh, catch you because you have officially reported the things so this is the thing and even if now you don't have uh, the clarification you are very much welcome to ask again because we are here for this thank you pp is very important and in the uk recently uh, 2018 they had to even make it suitability. It has to be suitable. Uh, I think a, a sister ad, asked a question in the kitchen yesterday about carpet grading. You, you have PP regulations, you have standard. Even in Nigeria now, uh, because we work with partners, let me just explain something. Joint venture means how much will local content have and how much will international have. We fought to see that we are not just 5%. So don't always think Nigeria 
we provide laborers. If I wear PP, an expatriate wear PP, it should be the same. They, we don't want them to wear one PP differently from us. Lives are lives. So when it comes, it may be the knowledge that will be different. But for PP, the director needs a globe. The security guard needs a globe. The visitor needs a globe. It must be one standard. So I'm happy the way the lecture has been communicated. PP is very important. If you are opportune to buy PP, don't just go and buy secondhand or wrong one. If there's a risk assessment and incident investigation, and it is discovered that you bought the wrong one, and it was resourced by your manager, by those government, by people you are thinking they don't provide health and safety, if they can prove that they, there was an account to charge, they paid for it, and you bought the wrong one, you are the one liable. So don't just write a good risk assessment and say health and safety, they don't listen to us. What do you buy? And do they test it? Somebody who is using size six must wear size six. And if it's worn out, you must then replace it. So please, it's very, very important. It may be the lowest in the hierarchy of control, but on the feed, it's very, very important. Very, very, I was doing an audit and I came, they wrote, don't remove your gloves. Don't remove your gloves. That was the instruction in the manual. I took my gloves away to shake hands with the guy and he also took his glove away and shook hands with me. He removed his glove. He should have told me, please put back your glove. But because I removed my glove, he equally removed his glove. So this mm -hmm. is where health and safety experts, they come to site, they will test you. If the, if, even if it, that time I was in a site and President Ambassador um, came to visit, the helmet did not fit him. It didn't fit mm -hmm. him and he was in a floor station. And he wanted to remove it. I told him, sir, can you get your helmet back? It's not rude. He may be testing me, you know, and he praised me for that. So I say, health and safety, you are the one people we test. And the way they will test you is the use of your PPE. If I can take a photo of, uh, of somebody who says social distance, and I meet the two of them laughing, <laughs> I will make money. So people are watching you. That is the way they will pin you down. You that is saying your health and safety, are you really wearing the, your PPE and are you wearing it rightly? Some people will invite you outside the compound and they will be with a phone and say, sorry, I have a phone call. If the instruction says no telephone, whoever the person is says, can you please put off your phone? They are only testing you. Well, thank, you thank you very much. Thank you so much. That's very really good. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night. 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 Good night.